uh, we're here with Lars Mulder, who just gave the talk, uh, well, not just, uh, kind of just gave the talk uh, on his uh, new app. And we're going to do a little Q&A uh, just to uh, go a little bit more in depth. Um, welcome, Lars. Thanks for Thanks. joining. And um, first, I want to ask you to share a little bit about your own background. Yeah, OK. Um, I have a background in biomedical engineering which I studied at the Eindhoven University of Technology. Um, after that, I had um, some seven years of academic career uh, doing a PhD uh, research project, uh, which was mostly on uh, clinical imaging uh, and bone structures. So mostly to do with, uh, with osteoporosis, for instance, in, in elderly women and the medical imaging of that. After that, uh, I changed to entrepreneurship and I started uh, a company in Eindhoven, uh, a service provider on um, research uh, for new cardiac devices like uh, artificial heart valves or balloon catheters for, in Dutch, the dotterprocedure. Um, so three years ago, I decided to step out of that again. Uh, in, in between, I did two years of um, life sciences and health consulting. So advising companies and universities on their uh, financial and their uh, research strategies. And as of April this year, I changed to EIT Digital to work on this project. And the idea is also uh, eventually to, to start up this venture and, uh, and lead it and make it growing in the future. Um, you mentioned that you moved to EIT Digital, which was also the main financer, right? Like where did the, um, because it's an app that's being developed right now, where did the initiative for this app came from, come from? Yeah, so the initiative uh, came from a group of partners that are all partners of EIT Digital uh, and uh, of EIT Health. And those are different uh, departments, if you want, from uh, within EIT. So these partners came together uh, uh, along around the core partner, which is the University of Maastricht, um, uh, where the departments of data science and eating behavior together already made a program, an app that was uh, targeted, uh, that was targeting adults with overweight. And that's also the scientific proof that I referred to in the, in the talk is that there for adults, it showed good effectivity in uh, reducing weight uh, and reducing uh, your, uh, your waist circumference, for instance. And uh, the whole goal of the new project was to bring together these partners again, uh, partners that work with youth in Amsterdam, for instance, and partners that develop apps and clinical partners that work with children that are obese and uh, really take that technology and develop it further so that it's applicable also for children and adolescents. But we will also be still uh, not only be focusing on children, but the adult part will also be part of the eventual product. But basically it started at the University of Maastricht. Okay. Um, you mentioned in your talk that uh, currently you're, you're doing a trial with a lot of kids from different countries. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to hear like um, one, how, how do you in general um, collect the data, but also what type of responses do you get already? Do these kids specifically have responses to the app or is it mostly like the parents and what type of responses do you get? Um, yeah, so that's really mixed. And like I said, it's also a very sensitive topic because particularly adolescents uh, that uh, are overweight uh, usually also have very low confidence for instance and it's a, it's a sensitive to topic to talk about but for now we're just we want to collect information on well basically app usage what kind of apps do they use when do they use it and what do they use it for um, what is it in those apps that make you use it or that you stick to using it for a longer time because that's that's one of the major problems with existing apps in which you have to, in which you can track what you eat and or track your exercise that's nice to do or still fun and new for two weeks or so and then yeah then sort of your motivation drops and you not you don't get anything in return 
And that's just so important to stick to using the program for at least three, four, five weeks so that the, the algorithm can learn what your eating behavior is and determine what's the best way to go forward in trying to improve your eating behavior. So that's really the feedback that we ask and get from the children. What do they like specifically in the apps that they use a lot? And what do they not like in other apps that they used before? Those kind of uh, information we are collecting now. Um, so it, it's still, still general, but important for us because we want to, we want to convey that cognitive behavioral therapy in a way that it is appealing, that it sticks and that people will be happy on, uh, uh, to use it for a prolonged period of time. And I can, I can imagine like, especially this details, like kind of determines how your program will look in the end as well. Like if they're saying like, oh, this definitely doesn't work. Like you want to know upfront, this we do not want to include in the, in the app. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Cause you were talking about like eating as a behavior. And I was curious about that because I mean, that's a very important thing, of course, but I'm really curious also on if you already have if you already have concrete um, examples of how this app, for example, could influence behavior, or is it really too far, too too early to say that? Well, no, it's 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 related to uh, it's cognitive behavioral therapy on the one hand, but the input is collected via a, a method that's called ecological momentary assessment, which means it will ask at random moments if you, how you feel, or do you have a craving for unhealthy eating, for instance, but also at set moments when, you know, it's dinner time or it's lunch time. What did you eat? How much did you eat? And that coupled with the variables on how you're feeling and what your social environment was, were you alone at home in the evening uh, or will you, were you out with friends during lunch or so? Those kind of variables all form this network of statistical uh, relationships and it will it's basically your behavioral profile if you want and the algorithm is capable of learning your particular profile but also can compare it to the profiles of all other users all over the world and then from it it can make a statistical prediction that on uh, usually on a Tuesday evening uh, uh, you are home alone and this is your vulnerable moment and you can get an intervention if you want but that can be simply something very basic as a push message uh, saying okay you know and you know it this is your vulnerable moment think about it maybe you want to do something different today or so those kind of things are just small but very positive and very it makes you aware it makes you learn those particular moments about yourself that's that's basically the direction that we're taking. We were talking a little bit before about the bitabola. Can you uh, um, re re uh, rephrase a little bit what you were saying then about like the um, uh, the neck of the unhealthy foods? Like how does that fit within that app? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's what I was explaining is that uh, usually with diets or if you. Uh, if you talk to people about healthy eating, uh, you immediately get the feeling that, okay, these people are anti-unhealthy eating. And they think that every bit of bowl is one too many. But that's, I want to emphasize that that's not the case. Um, uh, I am all for eating bitter bowl, but it's very important that you learn to recognize those moments and that you can make cognitive choices about that. And so if you choose to eat bitter bowl, but you're aware of it, then that's fine. And that also then makes you think of other situations that maybe, okay, next week I will not eat a bit, eat bitter baller, or tomorrow I will walk for an extra kilometer or so to, to balance that. And the combination of those cognitive choices are fine. As long as, you know, you find some balance that works for you that sort of overall improves your eating behavior. It's not all or nothing. A little improvement is also already quite significant. Um, so that's, this is also, uh, your partner is a dietitian, right? From or Oregon. Yeah. Um, people have a lot of, I mean, there's so many diets out there. 
uh, there's a lot of different opinions on what works and what doesn't. Um, how did you take that path on um, yeah, developing like something that's supposed to be healthy? Is that also all really personalized? So is it gonna, um, uh, how do you say that? Um, propose a different diet for each person depending on the own data? Or is there some, is there like a general path that you're taking and going from there? Yeah, um, maybe you can even state that practically every diet would work as long as you can also improve your behavior. If you don't change your behavior and you stop a diet, uh, the weight loss realized, you know, everyone knows this, it's like a yo-yo. Um, but indeed, it's all about personalization and a lot of diets out there do that already. Uh, and that even it's sometimes adjusted to your own metabolic profile. They draw some blood and then you get a very personalized menu, uh, there, um, which is nice. But in our case, it's basically personalized around your behavior, not about menus or uh, food suggestions. But I think, and it's like I said, that people who are not focused on this or eating or healthy eating is not a priority at all. Uh, you want to make things convenient and easy for them. And that can be something like the example I mentioned also is that if you go to a supermarket and some supermarkets already, you can scan uh, labels with your smartphone and then say, okay, I now have in my basket a broccoli. Um, but then you can get tips on with which other things you can combine it to also sort of have a good nutritional uh, uh, distribution uh, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, uh, those, those kind of things, and how you might prepare it to get suggestions to, you know, for varieties and different ways of doing it. And that's offering this piece of convenience that healthy eating becomes much more easy and much more the natural thing to do, for instance. But that's, that's just all conceptual still. But we want to make that also very personalized, yes. Uh, included in really all the stages of eating and behavior. So from exercising to shopping to everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. True. Um, why, why was the choice? Um, you mentioned that um, uh, you first want to focus on making this available for hospitals and doctors and then for a bigger audience. Um, can you share a little bit what the thought process is of that choice? Like, where does the choice come from? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. And that has to do with uh, um, business strategies. Because it's, it's a difference between offering a product to a place where there is a need for a product or offering a product to a place where there's not yet or not a need for a product. And so on the prevention side, definitely it's very important, but it's something that you push to the users. And, um, and where there's a need, the product will be pulled in. And so that in terms of business strategy, that's a logical way to go. Um, and also healthcare insurers, of course, are an important factor here um, because uh, using this app can be part of the standard treatment for obese patients. And then the doctors, of course, get it uh, as part of the reimbursement from healthcare insurers. And on the prevention side, that's not the case. So that's basically, uh, that will, the prevention side will take longer. And so we need, at first, a lot of proof that this works and uh, that it has benefits and that it is nice to use. And using that evidence from the clinical side, uh, effectively and successfully helping patients with obesity, children, adults with obesity, will also generate the belief for other users, which are not necessarily unhealthy eaters or have a normal weight. And building that evidence, building that confidence will come later. So that's, that's why we chose this strategy of market introduction. I can also imagine it creates more credibility when you're taking this path uh, instead of the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because in the prevention side, it's also very difficult to collect evidence of effectiveness because a lot of people have a normal weight and they will be using it. 
uh, because they will only make maybe smaller improvements, but still make improvements, but it's very difficult to measure that quantitatively. And in the clinic, you can do that. That makes sense. Um, I did hear you mention something about taking photos of your food and uploading them to the app. Is it also yep. going to be like the AI system is going to take details of this or is it more to also create that behavior? Um, well, I'm not exactly sure what your question is, but... Uh, should I elaborate a little bit? So what I'm trying to say is because normally uh, you, if you have like these diet apps, like you fill in like, I'm eating this, I'm eating this, I'm eating that. Um, yeah. Does the app take information like that from photos that you're uploading? Or is it more just really to create like your own uh, habit in that you're, you're sharing what you're eating and therefore you might eat more healthy? No, yeah, uh, both actually, but predominantly the first. Uh, um, as you said, that you, if you have to fill out everything that you eat uh, for a couple of weeks, every day, everything that you eat, it's a lot of work. Uh, and uh, that also is one of the reasons why people get demotivated to doing it, because it's just tedious work to do that. And we try to make it a little bit nicer to add gaming elements and uh, uh, yeah, make it more exciting and more rewarding um, but ideally yes and that's on the wish list to just take a photo and the software will recognize what you're eating and what the portion size is there's software out there that can do that uh, more or less uh, but it's not yet up to the standard that it's completely satisfying uh, imagine eating an apple some people eat it whole some people cut it into parts and other people peel it but in all cases it's just one apple and that's an, a very simple example of where these image recognition programs sometimes have a difficult time in seeing an apple in all those ways that people are eating it and also yeah if you have a lot of stuff on your plate things might be on top of each other so there's there's still room for improvement there but yeah that's definitely on the wish list because that would make things uh, a lot easier for tracking what you eat of course that automation uh, automation yeah i can easily say that somewhat of a holy grail in this uh, in this field but a lot of people are working on it so i have confidence that we can incorporate that at some point cool i'm very curious to see where that's going yeah. Uh, I can imagine can the developments of AI. I mean, there's happening so much in the last few years. Who knows where we will be in like five years or so. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just uh, everyone will have a smart house that just looks over your shoulder of what you're eating. <laughs> that's of also course, what, I was, uh, that's what I was wondering. Like, how does privacy and um, like sharing details come into play when it comes to the app? An absolute, uh, absolutely very important thing that we're addressing very seriously because uh, we're collecting a lot of user data. People are giving their consent that we collect that data and that we use it for comparison and that we give them a personalized uh, advice, of course. But we, we organized everything so that privacy, of course, is guaranteed uh, and that it's completely anonymous and that the data that you receive is only for you and the data that you uh, put in cannot be seen or uh, downloaded by others. So indeed, privacy is very important here and we're taking that very seriously. Great. Well, unless uh, our audience has some more questions, uh, then that was my uh, um, contribution. Um, Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone who's watching enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we hope to see everyone again next week. Uh, sorry, next week there won't be uh, uh, an innovation cafe, but the week after there will be on uh, the 3rd of December. Um, so we hope to see everyone then again. Um, so thank you and good night. Uh, I still have a question, if that's oh. allowed. Yes, for sure. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering, of course, it's not something that you uh, can solve or, uh, but in the states and in england i've read a lot of studies that the main issue is uh, that it's too expensive for many people to eat healthier because fruit and vegetables are com 
apparently far more expensive and uh, wondering if that's also something that you can uh, that people can also say what kind of input with their budget is that you have uh, yeah more yeah. more and less expensive uh, health tips or food tips um, for them yeah well, that's a that's a very uh, very uh, important point indeed uh, at least there is the notion that healthier food is more expensive than unhealthy food it's like i said but it's not it's not Completely. It's not a, it's not an excuse no, really not to eat healthy, but I was just wondering if that was also something that you're taking yes. into consideration. Yeah, it's 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 one of the it's one of those those uh, multifactorial problems underlying uh, everything is that uh, people uh, they don't care to spend money on something like this. Uh, if I have to pay five euros for an app, I won't use it. But five euros down the drain, of course. Um, and that's why I try to generate this business model and this marketing strategy, if you want, uh, including supermarkets, is, um, is that using this app will be free. Uh, it will cost you no money because you will have access through it to it via the supermarket that you're uh, shopping at. Uh, and also by successfully using or uh, uh, using it in the right way this app um, and using it for a prolonged period of time can save you points so that rewarding system is quite important <clears throat> because by saving points you get rewarded and you might save for discounts on uh, on healthy products or uh, or something like that and, uh, and that's it's very important i want this app for the users, for the people who will improve their eating behavior to be free. So that's why we choose other paths uh, to other types of clients than just selling individual apps to individual people. Because mm. yeah, that's just not scalable. So we're doing it like this and I hope that it will lead to um, not costing any money for the users, but only giving rewards. Uh, that's a challenging goal, I guess, but it's a... Uh... Yeah, but I think a necessary uh, hurdle that we need to take because selling uh, app uh, licenses to individual users will not generate a business at all. And, and I think in the CEO of these types of apps, you will slowly get drowned as well. Yeah, uh, uh, it can be included into other existing programs, for instance, so you won't even notice that it is our app but it will be integrated into other programs from supermarkets, for instance. But the key element is that it will remain free for the users because it's such an important thing and also to be uh, addressing also as a supermarket. Definitely. Um, we just had someone else joining us. I just wanted to double check if he still has any questions. If so, uh, it's still possible to ask them. Uh, so I'll give you a second to respond if you want to or unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm Paul. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm very late. I was in a meeting and I was uh, too late to join your meeting. But uh, yeah, um, I was uh, interested by the subject. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I'm, I'm a sports fanatic a bit uh, and uh, also in the software creation. Uh, so um, yeah, I would like to to know what you were talking about a bit, but uh, I yeah, I'm too late. So <laughs> the the Q and A will also be shared online afterwards, um, so you can rewatch it then. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, if you still have a question now, you're very welcome to to ask them. Uh, if 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 it's too much and you want to know everything, then I do suggest like to rewatch the Q and A afterwards. Um, but if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask them now. Yeah, or uh, you can rewatch the presentation as well. And uh, uh, although my email address is misspelled on the last slide uh, because it's EIT digital, but you will quickly recognize that. You can also pop me an email and ask you a question. Yep. The important thing is what the main message of my talk is that through cognitive behavioral therapy in a digital form, I believe that we can help everybody, uh, uh, overweight or not, 
to improve their eating behavior. That's the core mm -hmm. thing that I talked about. So feel free to rewatch the, the presentation and yeah, pop me an email if you have any, any questions. I will, be, I will be glad to answer them. I, I, I see opportunities for this. Like for instance, Garmin, they are working with uh, coach, uh, uh, coaches to uh, support sporters on their um, goal to reach a certain um, speed, for instance, while running. Mm -hmm. But you also have a lot of people using Garmin uh, for uh, losing weight. And if you are using your technology in combination with these Garmin coach uh, features, that would be very effective, uh, I, I expect. Yeah, definitely true. And uh, uh, I also talked about it in my talk is that we definitely have the ambition to, to couple this to, to wearables like smartwatches. Yeah. Uh, and I know Garmin uh, quite well. And I also know of many initiatives uh, of professional football clubs, for instance, mm -hmm. that, uh, that also work together with, with supermarkets because these clubs also want to know how their athletes behave when not at the club. So yep. what are they eating when they are at home or how active are they when they are at home? Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting combination of, uh, of, of things indeed and very interesting. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so Paul, if you have any particular questions uh, after uh, maybe rewatching the video, you feel free to pop me a message. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'll do, bye bye. Then um, we're also running uh, out of time, so we're perfect on time now uh, uh, to uh, to finish up. Um, so now, for real, I wanna wanna thank you again for <laughs> for answering the questions and the presentation. Uh, we hope to see you uh, once again when we go back with uh, with our live events. And um, for everyone who has been watching, uh, we hope to see you again in two weeks uh, at, the, at the presentation online. And for now, have a good evening. Thanks.